Friends, today is Friday, the 11th of September, and the anniversary of 9-11. And we keep in mind all of those who were affected by that terrible tragedy of terrorism in our country, those who died, those who were hurt, all of us who have been affected emotionally by this horror. And we keep in mind peace, peace, to pray for peace, peace in the world. And at the same time, uh, these days, uh, recording this on Friday, the 11th of September, 2020, we have fires all over the West, including in Oregon, and the air quality is terrible. And all of us are going through that as well. Hopefully in a day or two, this will blow away. But as if a pandemic weren't enough, we add to it all of these other issues. And hopefully, in a short time, we'll get through it all. Today, our Gospel brings us the final section of Luke's Sermon on the Plain, the Sermon on the Plain, a very short section, a little short Gospel today, in which Jesus teaches in parables, a couple of parables, small little parables, just a couple of lines, with some very, very vivid images very vivid images. For example, can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? And second, why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? The hypocrisy. Oftentimes we see the problems of President and others, but we fail to see our own. So, a couple of words uh, today about blind guides, blind guides, and with reference in particular to spiritual direction, spiritual direction. Perhaps you've thought about uh, the fact of getting a spiritual director to help you in your spiritual life. It's easier said than done, easier said than done, to find a person who is not a blind guide. Just because the person is a priest or religious doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be a good spiritual director. And, of course, just to guide ourselves is oftentimes dangerous because we are blinded to our own faults. Remember, <clears throat> Hearing someone said, uh, he who has himself as a guide has an idiot as a disciple. <laughs> he who has himself as a guide has an idiot as a disciple. Now, we need assistance. We need help. We need somebody to reflect upon our spiritual life with us and help us to see the direction. But how do you choose? How do you choose? Many people have come to me over the years and have told me that they just haven't been able to find a spiritual director. They speak to their priest or someone else, and a priest is unable oftentimes to be a spiritual director and to take on that responsibility, which is quite time-consuming, and many of us are alone in our parishes, so it's hard for us to do. I, uh, perhaps you know, was the rector of a seminary for 10 years at Mount Angel. And it was my responsibility to hire spiritual directors, and I have to admit it was difficult to find a good spiritual director. Somebody I would trust, that I would trust with my own spiritual life, that I would be willing to entrust others to that person. We're fortunate in Oregon to have a couple of monasteries, the Benedictines, the Trappists, the Friary of Dominicans, and some of them, I'm sure, are, are just fine as spiritual directors. But to find one that will not lead you into a pit, can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into the pit? That's a challenge. When I finished my work at Mount Angel in the year 2000, to my surprise, I was invited to become a spiritual director myself at the North American College in Rome, where I had attended school <clears throat> and had a number of good spiritual directors. 
And I can't say that I was completely prepared for this, but I had to jump into it to the best I could. And for three years, I was a spiritual director. Each year, working with 40 students, that's a lot of students, and a great, great responsibility not to mislead them, not to be a blind guide, to help them. And some of the things I think about um, when I think about not being a blind guide is choosing the challenge of choosing a spiritual director and what do you look for? What do you look for in a spiritual director? And a couple questions come to mind. Do they know, do they know where to take you? Or do they just sit there and nod their head? They need to know where you, as the directee, need to go. And secondly, are they utterly dedicated to Christ? Utterly dedicated to Christ. Who do people say that I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that makes all the difference. Christ, the focus, the center, number one. And third, <clears throat> do they recognize our need for a savior? Do they recognize our need for a savior? Do we recognize the, the good and the need we had for Christ to come? and to be a savior. And that's the kind of what's behind that, what's the splinter in your brother's eye and the beam in your own. To recognize, sometimes we see, oh, I can help you and do this and that, but we have a beam in our own eye. We don't recognize our own need, hypocritically, our own need for a savior. And so a spiritual director has to recognize the need, his own need, her own need for a savior. And finally, <clears throat> any good spiritual director will not simply point out what's wrong, but what's good, what's good. Develop this, build upon this, this is good. Not just point out all your errors and so on. And finally, I would <clears throat> say this, that the spiritual life is not just a journey inward. If all you focus on is you and your interior life, you're missing something. And your spiritual director is missing something. There also has to be an outward focus to see the world, to understand the world, to live in the world authentically and to see the needs of other people. The spiritual life, we might say, takes us inward, but that inward ultimately brings us outward to love of Christ and to love of neighbor. I hope that uh, it's possible in your own spiritual life, maybe one day to be able to find a good spiritual director, hard and difficult as that is, but if you can't, uh, at kind of the bottom line, what you need to do is to find a preacher in a parish somewhere who you might think would be a good spiritual director, who preaches well, who recognizes Christ at the center of his life, who recognizes the need for a savior, who recognizes the need to move inward and outward and ultimately, not only to serve God, but to serve the neighbor. Hold that thought, and we'll see you tomorrow.